I want to go to something that's been receiving very little attention, but a number of state governments, well, they are offering free health care to people fleeing the Israel-Gaza war zone on the 600 subclass visitor visa. Now, this is despite the federal government's own visa conditions that say people entering Australia on this visa class must cover their own health costs for the duration of their stay. For more on this, I'm joined now by the Australian Jewish Association President, David Adler. Well, David, let's get this very clear. So we're talking about people that the Albanese government brought out here on tourist visas because they admit it would be quicker and easier to get them in rather than mm -hmm. assessing asylum claims. Now we find that taxpayers are on the hook for their health care. Uh, absolutely right, uh, Peter. What's happening here, the big picture, is that we have radical social engineering underway by the Labor government and the taxpayer is paying for it. We know that they've given so far over $82 million uh, into Gaza. Uh, we know that they have allocated over $25 million for social integration of these people. We now know that they have access to free health care as visitors, uncosted, uncapped by the way, uh, and also there's a big security cost as well. So the actual package that the Australian taxpayer is carrying is enormous and the public mm. health care is just another element of it. Um, I presume too, David, we know that about 70% have put in a claim to stay here permanently, they've applied for protection, i.e. They've, they've applied to be assessed as a refugee. I imagine when they leave this visitor subclass 600 and move across to either a bridging visa or some sort of interim protection measure, other things will come with that as well in terms of taxpayer support. Uh, who knows? It would be a really interesting question to ask what is the total cost to Australia, to the taxpayer? And keep in mind, uh, there is no mandate for this. Uh, no one took to an election that we should bring thousands uh, into Australia from possibly the highest risk location on the planet and set the highest mm. number of any country in the world. Um, it'll be really interesting to see if this continues as uh, an issue for the forthcoming federal election because I, I think that uh, these concerns will uh, act against Labor very substantially. While I've got you, University of uh, Sydney, the Vice-Chancellor Mark Scott, <laughs> he's resisting calls to resign following that admission that he failed Jewish students, he failed Jewish staff. They said they were unsafe on the campus during those pro-Palestinian demonstrations, or clearly they were. It would appear today that he doesn't even have the backing of the Chancellor, who is his boss, David Thodey. Is his position untenable? Uh, well, one thing I can say absolutely is that the Jewish community, the Jewish students, the Jewish staff have no confidence uh, in him. And there is a level of accountability expected of our most senior managers. I mean, the guy earns uh, around a million dollars a year. Uh, he is ex-ABC, so perhaps having at least an anti-Israel perspective uh, is to be expected. And unfortunately, um, our Federal Minister for Education, Jason Clare, seems to be similar. If you were to look at his social media just in the last couple of days... I would look at his seat, David. Yeah. Look at the makeup of his seat. In indeed. Um, and, and you'll see him uh, expressing concern about uh, civilian and child deaths in Lebanon now, but not a word about the Hezbollah terrorism. So both of them seem to be uh, hand in glove in terms of the uh, perspective that they have. But uh, our organisation has actually called for his resignation, the resignation of Mark Scott. Uh, we do think that his position uh, is untenable. It needs a new broom, uh, someone who's willing to tackle the, uh, the issues of racism and anti-Semitism, particularly on the university mm. campus uh, more effectively. David Adler, thank you.
a major point there too, Jason Clare. Western Sydney, the seat, uh, highest Muslim population in the country, uh, just over 30%.